and welcome to Zeobiz. Joining me today is Airport Authority of India's Chairman, Mr. R.K. Srivastava. Sir, thanks for speaking to Zeobiz. Mr. Srivastava, let me start by asking you that Airport Authority of India has invested about Rs. 300 crores on the modernization of eight airports. But there are no flights, which is why these airports are now turning out to be ghost airports. What measures is Airport Authority of India taking to make these airports economically viable? First, let me tell you that uh, aviation is a sector which is always supply-driven kind of the development of infrastructure should take place. When we introduced railway in India, that time there was no economic feasibility done because people had not seen even the locomotive and other things. But yet it was first supplied and then the demand came. So likewise in the aviation sector also, first you make supply of the infrastructure, then the demand will be generated and airlines will be showing interest for flying in that area. So likewise, we have developed these uh, airports, which you call it a ghost, but they will not remain ghost airport because in the new policy, we are envisaging to increase the traffic from uh, 7 crore purchase of the tickets to 30 um, crores uh, middle class populations who have got the disposable income and we want to rope in and to make them fly at least once in a year. So these airports will become viable that the operation will start and in the new draft civil aviation policy, the government envisages to develop the regional connectivity. For that a scheme is going to be launched and naturally all these uh, airports will become viable and will become, will become operational also. Sir, it sounds nice to say things like a middle class family can f afford to fly annually but it means quite in real terms. You need landing fields, uh, air traffic control, proper terminals, pilots, crew, maintenance and multiple ground equipments and then the requisite aircraft that fit the criteria of the route. How do you think it's possible by the efforts that Airport Authority of India is going to take? To start with, we are envisaging a low frill kind of the airports. Means it will not be a very jaggy kind of the infrastructure. Bare minimum will be made available there. And the cost uh, of operation generally at present, 50, uh, the 50% 50 of that goes to security. So we are trying to cut those costs by roping in the state government by employing their uh, security operators so that we make it cheaper. We will develop no frill kind of the terminal. Similarly, bare minimum will be developed on the air side, keeping the safety and security in mind. So that's how we will make uh, these uh, terminals at uh, bare minimum so that the operational is, uh, it becomes operational and we don't unnecessarily add cost to the entire operation. Sir, in an interview, you had said that to augment air connectivity throughout India, more than 200 operational airports are required. It's a huge number. Is it possible to achieve this target? And what's the roadmap that Airport Authority of India has? As I told you that uh, the government is going to give uh, thrust on the regional connectivity. At present, uh, we have only focused on the connectivity with the metro towns but now the emphasis is that how we connect the tier 2 and tier 3 set cities and how we develop the interstate and intrastate connectivity so once this starts happening and the impetus uh, it gets on the regional connectivity i think that will be a requirement and more and more demand is already coming from different states like we had uh, last year uh, signed MOU for seven airports to be developed in Uttar Pradesh. Similarly, from other states, there is a huge, huge demand that we should develop more and more airports so that the regional connectivity in coming days improves and the intra-state uh, movement of the people uh, that also improves. People now want to cut short their time in the transport. Uh, so that's how we are uh, trying to emphasize and uh, that's how we envisage that uh, these many airports will be required for the development of the um, economy. So with this announcement of 100 smart cities that Government of India plans to build, we will need as many airports also. What role do you think that Airport Authority of India can play in development of smart cities then? One of the component is that how fast you make connectivity among these cities and how fast you make the movement 
for the investors and the people who wants to have a business not only in the city outside city and want to connect with the rest of the world so for developing a smart city i think the foremost requirement is that how good you develop the infrastructure for the connectivity and airport aviation is the fastest means of communications and therefore um, uh, aviation uh, particularly the airport have a great role to play in development of these cities mr suvastava tell me something that what exactly had changed for aviation industry since the launch of gagan at present uh, we uh, do the navigations through our uh, ground based technology all the equipment they are fitted on the ground and we use uh, take help of those aids for navigation purpose now the gagan is the space based technology and it is uh, improved version and it gives uh, far uh, accurate uh, precision in the navigation not only in the take off uh, in the landing and uh, in the navigation also so gagan is going to have a great impact uh, not only in the navigation but for the regional connectivity also we won't require that many gadgets and the equipments for uh, navigation alerts gagan uh, with some procedures uh, which are developed uh, that will cut down the cost on the uh, development of the ground based technology for it uh, for a navigation purpose so what benefits is airport authority of india getting from gagan can you explain it for the common man this year only we have got the certification from the dgca and with the introduction of the gagan the space um, uh, vertical separation and the horizontal separation between the aircrafts will be reduced and it it will add precision to the entire navigation so therefore it is going to unleash the benefits which is not uh, visible um, immediately but once the aircraft they come fitted with the um, gagan equipage i think it will be a game changer right then mr suvastava how are things going to change further with introduction of irnss irnss is also um, aid uh, to the gagan facilities but since it is a regional kind of the uh, service so it will not uh, benefit much So coming to the greenfield airports how do you think gagan will help you make greenfield airports and first of all tell our viewers that what exactly is greenfield airports greenfield airport is that you acquire the land afresh and then you develop the air strip then you develop the terminal you mean everything you start from the scratch just from zero so that is called the greenfield there is uh, no existence of any kind of the aviation infrastructure so in the green field then um, for the you will be not requiring that much investment for the ground based technology since it is a space based technology so with a fewer um, navigational aids you can operate these green field areas particularly those are located in the remote uh, places sir recently we saw massive floods in chennai and the pouring was so heavy that the chennai airport Uh, was completely submerged under water and the flight operations had to stop for couple of days uh, what measures can airport authority of india take during such situation when we hit, we are hit by calamities when rescue operation has to be done and if airports are not functional so what measures do you think that airport authority of india can take in such situations generally airports should be developed at a higher altitude so that uh, these area don't get submerged and whatever the infrastructure is developed that is also um, disaster resilient particularly if suppose it is in earthquake um, prone area so it should be earthquake um, proof kind of the infrastructure should be developed what happened um, in the chennai the infrastructure which was developed this entire chennai airport it is uh, along the Um, near the bordering um, adya river so we never envisaged that uh, water will uh, the level of uh, the monsoon um, uh, rain will be uh, in in very short span of time that much rain will happen and there will be dam also there will be release of um, huge quantity of water so that's how this entire um, air strip got submerged in the waters that was not in visage but in our future development we'll have to keep all these things in mind so that we develop our infrastructure at a higher altitudes and these infrastructure don't get 
submerge in the water because uh, during disaster if you want to reach the um, relief then uh, connectivity is uh, paramount um, is a, is a very important that uh, the, we can reach to the people there so therefore uh, the entire development of the uh, airport infrastructure should be disaster resilient and in fact we are taking measures to make a disaster plan for each and every airport and we develop our infrastructure accordingly we um, increase the capacity of our operational people so that they can uh, meet the challenges uh, during the event of the disaster and they can immediately be available for the uh, relief purpose also so you have teamed up with dial and med department to ensure proper flight operations during fog uh, can you tell us more about that? In fact, Delhi, we have already installed CAT 3B um, system. So, Delhi, it is not a problem. Up to 50 meter, if there is a visibility is not there, we can operate it. Other airports also, we are developing the similar kind of the infrastructure. In fact, uh, Lucknow and Amritsar recently, we have made it operational. CAT 2 facility have been installed and up to 300 meters visibility, we can operate there. And similarly, we are uh, expanding it further. Jaipur also we are working so that we make it uh, operational this season and this is how we are going whatever uh, in particularly in the northern area where uh, such incidents of fog happens we are trying to make all the airports so that uh, they can meet the challenges of fog during the winter. Mr. Srivastava my last question to you is that you are handing over the operations of Jaipur and Ahmedabad airports to Singapore's Changi airport. Can you tell us more about this collaboration, sir? This is a G2G kind of the arrangement between the government of Singapore and government of India, where um, uh, Singapore government will nominate some expert entity to um, have a collaboration with the airport authority of India for operation and management uh, of the airports. What will be the modality we will work? Uh, I think recently they have nominated the Changi Airport for that purpose from by the government of Singapore and uh, from the government of India, Airport Authority of India has been nominated for taking up uh, this operation and management. But the detailed nuances of this arrangement has is still to be worked out and once uh, we meet, we will uh, deliberate on this and we will take it forward. Mr. Srivastava, thanks a lot for speaking to you. Thank you. Thank you.